What's the subject matter? Whatever Kurt says it is. Say. It's hard to say. Hard to say. Look at Stewie. You can tell he's smiling. He's got to get punched. We should ask Chef to bring some more snowballs in the office. Chef! Yeah? Can we have more snowballs? Yeah. I'll get some. Should we brew some coffee on the cast? Would you like some coffee? Of the pod? <laughs> Am I just going to sit here and talk to myself today? Well, I mean, if you want coffee, you can have coffee. I'm going mean, to have some. I'll make you some. Well, you don't have to make me some. I can get up. <coughs> Probably the further I get away from the microphone, the better. So... That's okay, though. Yeah. I'm diving in my notebook for topics. <laughs> Are we going to ask the Should question? Ask Dario. Yeah, ask Dario. He's painting. Hey, Dario. Ruben. Yes? What's a good podcast topic? Santa. Santa! It's coming to town, guys. I heard that he was going to stop by. All right, so that's a topic. We're discussing Santa? No, 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 no. The Christmas spirit. Oh, the Christmas spirit. Or Christmas cheer. The cheer of the Christmas? Holiday oh, cheer. Stewie's stuck in my hair. Oh, my gosh. Stewie, you don't eat hair. <laughs> that hurts so bad. That's another topic, though. That thing. Stewie. Stewie. He's not a thing. He's an elk. He's an elk? I mean, I don't think he's an elk by Cameron Haynes' standards, but by Target standards they are. And not by Target as in let's shoot a gun as a Target. It's we bought him at Target and it said elk mount, decorative elk mount. Let's see if the tag's still on the back. Well, there's a tag on the back, but that's not what about but so you all know, there's for. So here's my theory on Christmas cheer. Okay. And it's not a theory. I have this just a thought that I verbalize frequently, and that is, it aggravates me that people talk about the Christmas spirit or holiday cheer, because. Oftentimes, I have noticed that those are the same people who are jerk faces the rest of the year. And if they would just be kind all the time, they'd be happier and wouldn't have to tell me to have Christmas cheer. Because, hey, I'm pretty happy in March. Do you have a Christmas tree up in I'm, March? Well, n no. <laughs> but I'm, it's he doesn't have one up now. I don't have one up now, so... <laughs> <laughs> so that's not, I mean, why should we be nicer to people closer to Christmas? Why is it different? If it's good to have holiday cheer or the Christmas spirit or to be nicer to people closer to Christmas, why, why is it not good to be nice to people all the time? Can I have a Kleenex? Yeah, you can have a Kleenex. Okay. Kayla's giggling at me, and now I want to know her thoughts. I want to know her thoughts, but are you going to officially open the podcast? Yeah, we're open. This is the Hospitality Authority Podcast here at the Leadership Center. I'm Kurt. Miley's here. Michaela's here. Dario! He's here. What's up? Say hello. He's here. <laughs> Dario's here. He's in, he's he's in, in his, his office. In his office. He's playing with a painting tool because he's working on a project for January. He's plugged in. December. December? We're doing it in December? Yeah. Rad! December, December could be in two days. So, I want to know, Michaela, your thoughts on what I just threw out there. I just, it's a really open-ended question. My, here's my official. Bib? I have a napkin. <laughs> Miley shouldn't be allowed powdered things with powdered sugar or liquids which are not clear. <laughs> I don't know where it went. So here's my official position okay. on the Christmas cheer. Your Kurt's official position on Christmas cheer is my 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 absolute point is I think it is a little silly 
but there is a vibe that says we should raise our kindness just because of the time of year. Hmm. Hmm. Crickets. Hmm. Crickets. Hmm. I'm eating a cookie. <laughs> then they are good cookies. They are such cookies. Mm-hmm. Michaela, what's your thoughts? Well, I try, try, I try, operative word. So you make an effort. I make an effort to be kind year-round. So you effort kindness year-round? Mm-hmm. But I think I try, I don't know why, extra hard around Christmas time. But kindness is kind of a thing you do all the time. I make an effort, too. Sometimes I'm not. Sometimes everyone's not. Wow. We just got called out on our lack of kindness. No, 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 no. Everyone, uh, being being kind is very difficult. It's very difficult to be kind all the time. It It is. It is impossible to be kind all the time. You're correct. Little acts of kindness are actually very easy, but Mm -hmm. it is super hard to be kind all the time. Mm-hmm. Super hard. So how do you feel about the efforting of kindness during the holidays? Is it real, like Santa, or is it superficial, like leprechauns? And sales. And sales. <laughs> I think for some, it's genuine and real. I think for others, from probably majority, it's superficial. That bother you? Do you like? Do you walk through the town and interact with people, and they're like, "Happy holidays, Michaela," and you're like, "Not real." If I know the person, and I know how they act, you know, eleven months out of the year, then yeah. If they're different, you know, December first to December twenty fifth, then yeah, I know that it's not genuine. It does bother me. I don't. Yeah necessarily like fakeness it's hard for me to be fake we know (laughs) i want to play poker with you (laughs) hey i have beaten my brother and my dad at poker you want to know them too you know what (laughs) michaela doesn't like fakeness she wants everyone to be as real or if not more real than her eyebrows her eyebrows are real (laughs) Just, just for those the of you. The darkness. <laughs> I was just thinking about that. Like, We talk about fakeness, but we both love makeup. But I don't use that to alter my appearance. Like, it's not to deceive people of my appearance. It's something that makes me feel better. <laughs> so we've done this podcast already. Anyway, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay, so we're back to about, the holiday spirit. No, if you want to know more about makeup, go back in the archives. It's to like, like episode, episode nine. Is that what it is? Okay. Uh, okay, so holiday spirit. Um, the concept. The concept of. I the think it's that whole goodwill thing, though, that you know has been traditionally throughout the world leveraged in that period between. Th- you know, Christmas or, you know, and, and New Year's, um, that it's, it's kind of a global thing. I don't know if it is anymore, but I mean, when you look at back in history and stuff, you know, a lot of times it's kind of like when the Olympics were up, there was a cease, there'd be ceasefires if there were wars happening because it was a time of goodwill. I've got some problems with the Olympics, too, but that's another podcast. That's a different podcast. Okay. Uh, Anyway, so (laughs) holiday spirit. Yeah, I mean, why is there no uh, spirit of kindness? Why is there no holiday spice flat flat whites whites at Starbucks? I don't need holiday spirit anymore if Starbucks wrecked it. Um, (laughs) Just kidding. (laughs) I I think it's really easy. One, it's it's really easy to be a Scrooge all year round. I think it's extra easy to be a Scrooge around Christmas because, especially if you, you know, follow that storyline and you are very materialistic. So Christmas can cost you a lot of money if you let it. Like, if you really... I think that's one thing that bothers me. 
is that you can like you can let the cost of Christmas really get you down and make you become a Scrooge. Although I guess if we're gonna think about Christmas spirit all year round, have you been in a store lately? Christmas is up in July. I don't go to stores. Hallmark releases their ornaments in July. It's crazy. I don't know. I think those kind of things make me a little bit of a Debbie Downer on Christmas. Like Christmas. We just had this conversation with team members two days ago, yesterday. Yesterday, yesterday. yeah, when we had the kiddos about stuff Christmas there. and how Derek did not think that Christmas that Christmas was starting too early, like by putting up your tree now. Which, mind you, the day after Thanksgiving, I put up my Christmas tree because I love to have my Christmas tree up. That's pretty common. I know. And I love my Christmas tree. Oh, her Christmas tree is really adorable. I saw it in person. But I do not believe in Christmas music, Christmas displays, Christmas anything before Thanksgiving. Because I feel like we skip over Halloween and Thanksgiving. Once Fourth of July happens, it instantly becomes Christmas in a lot of stores. Well, it's hard because you get Fourth of July, but you've got... (coughs) I mean, there's Labor Day and things. I mean, there's some really poignant things that go through on days that are kind of, they should be recognized for what they are. Right. Uh, we have a rule at the Leadership Center that unless a client has booked something, we've had a few times where we've had Christmas parties before Thanksgiving, or we've had family Thanksgivings where they do their Christmas card picture. Uh, we've had family reunions who do Christmas card pictures in the summer where we've put trees up. But traditionally, we do not put out any Christmas decorations till after Thanksgiving. Uh, now, a lot of times here, we try to get them up right after Thanksgiving just because we have so many rooms to decorate. Um, but that doesn't always work. Um, I was excited, though, that we got the lights up, that John Bader played light guy and got up on the roof and got the lights up on the peak and get the lights up on the house. And... Uh, we get the big Christmas tree in the lobby, and this year RTC Lighting's allowing us to use their trees that we use during the gala during Christmas, which I think is going to be really pretty. Um, but I'm not a big proponent for Christmas before Thanksgiving. This whole Christmas spirit thing, I think I am starting to agree with Kurt a little bit more in regards to, if you really look at what the Christmas spirit is, and I suppose we should have Michaela Google what the definition of the Christmas spirit is. Or the holiday spirit is. I just think it's, it, it's kindness. It's, it's kindness. Of- I know. Um, but kindness should be leveled all year round. It should be given freely. Um, and I know that we spend a lot of time trying to educate on that and to promote that throughout our team and throughout our programs and how we interact with guests and the messaging in our social media. That kindness should just be something you do. It shouldn't be... A designated two, three, four week period of the year. And man, think about it. If kindness were an action, like if there were an action verb that we did every day, that we partook in every day with each other, how much nicer things would be. I, mean, I think things like this call to mind the fact that our schools have had to start the Be Kind campaigns because. We don't harbor that spirit in our teachings and in our interactions and our behavior. So I think that's, I think you have a reason to be a little bah humbug on that one. No, I'm not bah humbug on it. I'm I'm semi anti commercialism. You're semi anti commercialism? It's it's an exploitation. It's an exploitation of. The actual holiday and whatever religion you are the the holiday of christmas you know is going to mean different things to you and the commercialization the exploitation increases uh, and exponentially every year and it tries to mask itself as a spirit a spirit of giving mm-hmm. and it's really not because you cannot buy kindness you can't give me something. Do you to suppose show that, that you're it is commercialism, and it's also some kind of middle ground to say holiday spirit because we've got Hanukkah and Kwanzaa and uh, Christmas, and I apologize because I'm sure I'm forgetting others. But then we also have those who don't believe but do like to embody that spirit, and um, 
or might not ascribe to a religious belief of the holidays, but do ascribe to the spirit of them. Does that make sense? Probably. So. I don't know if that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I said probably. If I'm something we all view as universal is actually not universal <laughs> based on perception, how does it affect our attention interactions? <laughs> it's, it's ironic you say that. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Don't you think? Yeah. Um, so here's the deal. I've decided that there's no such thing as common knowledge. You've decided yeah, that there's no such thing as common knowledge. Right. So when, even when I pose the question, is the Chris, is Christmas spirit kind of a silly thing when you should just be kind all the time, that concept of Christmas spirit, you even suggested that Michaela Google it. I did. There's scientific mumbo right. jumbo. So when I say Is it, there? I closed it out. The Scientific American had this whole analysis on Christmas Right. Right. So if I say... Why this time of year specifically Why this time important. of year specifically it's more important. So yes. that, And I'm guessing the scientists are going to have to... They're going to say something about day length in the northern hemisphere. Aren't yeah. They, they talked about the day they length they talked about is the end of harvest and people are looking for warmth and comfort because it gets dark quicker. But they did emphasize that this should be practiced year round, not just at Christmas time. Mm -hmm. But their Paul, their beliefs, their findings, yeah, come from Scrooge, and what Scrooge went through with the three ghosts, and those are the what comprise Christmas spirit. Which is a lot of anecdotal data, not empirical, concrete data. No. Right. And back to what Miley was saying about the universality of some things that aren't universal. There you go. Because we, we haven't defined what and we all mean. That we haven't agreed. People act different ways in different parts of the world. Does it say, though, that it's kind of this time of the year everywhere? It did not, I didn't, my skimming, it didn't see that. Well, if you look at day length, then it's just northern hemisphere. It did your, specifically the, say northern hemisphere, though. <laughs> I saw that. <laughs> if you live on the equator. What is what is Dario Diaz's opinions? Mr. Diaz? We're on a mission. What do you think of uh, the... Christmas spirit or holiday cheer, the concept of that. What? What? What do you think of the Christmas spirit? Or I'll be, I'll be right back. <laughs> He's so popular. <laughs> Every time we want to ask a question. Well. So the point, the point of non-universal universals, those concepts, you have to agree on a definition. So what definition are we agreeing on for holiday spirit? Well, we haven't really. I, I just don't think you can agree on one. So that is one thing that everybody kindness thinks towards all. is universal. Okay, kindness towards all. So we're going to agree that the holiday spirit, which should be embodied all year round per the scientists and Kurt Wissenberg, mm -hmm. is kindness towards all. Mm -hmm. I can agree with that. Do you agree with that? Yeah. Like, can we have a motion? The way to that I view, I guess, Christmas cheer, the way that I view life, though, is with the golden rule. And it's treat others that you wait. <laughs> treat others the way that you want to be treated, mm -hmm. right? And I just amplify that at Christmas time or the holiday season. And even the golden rule, though, is different for everyone because everyone interprets how they want to be treated differently. I know. So to me, I just amplify the way that I wish people would treat me during the holidays or try to. That's what it means to me. Mm -hmm. But again, like you said, it's not universal. That's but kindness said. is, correct? Is kindness a universal truth? But everyone has a different degree of what kindness means. Like to someone saying hi would be kind. To others, them handing out food or, you know, giving them a coat would be kind. But not to everybody. Free hugs. No, thank you. <laughs> So, when we did the zip line at the Grand Canyon West a few weeks ago in Arizona. Almost a the Grand Canyon ago. in Arizona? Yeah. 
That one? That green? Yeah, that <laughs> one. You know what, <laughs> Kurt? Just double check, and it wasn't the one in Vermont. <laughs> well, that's not the Grand Canyon. Oh. Anyhow, when we were there in Arizona at the Grand Canyon, <laughs> going to go zip lining, I <clears throat> gave Michaela a hug, and then I also told her that I loved her. And I told her I meant it. Yeah, but you thought you were going to die. I didn't think I was going to die. Well, the thought sound made... I could, but I wanted to make sure she knew that. But before I go on my tangent, we've got to ask Dario Diaz that question again. Yeah. Oh, Kurt, what's well, the question? What do you think of the holiday spirit or Christmas cheer or that general... Just any spirit or any holiday? No. Christmas. Christmas yeah. spirit? Yeah. I think they... I think... People misunderstand spirit to atmosphere. It's more Christmas atmosphere. Atmosphere. The Christmas <gasps> spirit. Oh, you're this welcome. Is why we need you. Ambiance. Yeah, because necessary spirit. I mean, you go to Walmart. I don't know if I can say brands, but if you go to a a store and you will see. Their decorations in September. You know what I mean? Yeah, we were just discussing how Christmas so comes there, out in July now so there for is commercialism no, reasons. There's no such a thing as a. You don't feel like oh, there is a oh, I can feel it. You're like no, nah, not yet, dude. Oh, it's Christmas 95 music. degrees yeah. outside. Yeah. Can oh, Christmas feel? music. <laughs> so it's like we're not ready for this. So. Actually, Christmas decorations or any lights or anything, it doesn't bring any atmosphere or spirit, if you want to call it that way. It's until you know that uh, nostalgia or... Because, you know, the real meaning of Christmas, in this case now, we have to say holiday. Mm -hmm. So we don't offend. We don't have to. Well, we s everybody says holidays. Some some people uh -uh, make a the choice. The TLC too. Christmas card, card refuses says, to say holidays. It, it says, says Merry Christmas, Christmas just, and Happy just, New know, Year. But uh, how many people are really like excited? Now, I'm excited because you know, it's, I don't know. Always since I was little, I always loved Christmas. Now I should clarify: in Mexico, we don't have s Santa. There's no gifts on Christmas. So we're not like expecting. You don't put out cookies and milk. No. You don't put shoes out so they can put fruit. No. No. What, will you tell us about Christmas in Mexico? I don't know where that's from. Uh, well, Christmas, France. we do. See, I wish it was Mexico because the tradition is we celebra celebrate from. Uh, December 12th all the way to the 24th and it's like or like two weeks or whatever uh, we call it Posadas which is a traditional Christmas party so people from let's say a street completely streets and small towns or neighborhoods they will close their street and they will um go caroling home to home and all the street the street is closed there'll be food everybody has food in their own houses so if you walk along the street and you come back you know everybody has food in their house so there'll be piñatas in the middle of the street to for the kids so this happens in a different neighborhood in different street for 12 days that's amazing until christmas eve it's a community celebration. And, and yeah, like for example, in my hometown, there be you can hear you know there's a dance, there's music, there's all food, and so people will kind of try to find out where this is at. Now, this I don't go that deep, but not everybody celebrates this, but it's actually pretty cool. Now, you come over here to the United States, and there's you know no posadas there is no previous huge party before Christmas which is kind of different so now there's the individual spirit, ones not community so ones I, yeah it's just like your job you know 
or your work or whatever. Or friends. Some friends, friends do Christmas parties. But there is no now that is the real Christmas spirit because you can actually sense it like it's there. You can actually like, dude, there there is a party. There is ponche, which is a tea. There is piñatas. I would love it if we had piñatas. I think you should start up caroling there, Dario. What I did, actually, when we moved to our house, uh, we actually, we had a, we hosted a posada in my house. So all the neighbors around my house, they came to my house and have food, and then we had a piñata. Can we, can we do this again? Can we text Mrs. Diaz and ask her if we can have a posada? So I the don't Diaz? know if <laughs> Sasa del the, Diaz? I don't know if we have the time to do that. But anyway, to, to answer your question, there is no such a thing uh, as a, as a um, spirit. And you know, the thing is that all these movies, new movies, they try to portray like everybody is forgetting or about Christmas or the reason or whatever. So the only thing that feels Santa's uh, vehicle of transportation is the spirit of Christmas, right? Mm -hmm. So now everybody it was has in, uh, that one movie. Elf. 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 And, and, and there's another movie. In, there was another uh, one Netflix. though too. The, Remember when like Tim that. Allen was Santa Claus? Santa Claus? Yeah, and I'm thinking about I love that Santa one Claus even before movie. him. That I think so was. last year we had an exchange student. We had Owen from the Netherlands and he had never ever exchanged presents on the 24th or the 25th. And traditionally in our house, because we've hosted so many exchange students, I always think it's weird that we would have Christmas Day on the 25th because they do Christmas on the 24th. And uh, so Owen was saying, though, that there's this sleigh that uh, Santa, or I forget what they call him, comes from Spain. And he comes with uh, a big gift for the children. And he goes through all of Denmark, through all the different um, areas. And or not Denmark, the Netherlands. And delivers so everyone has their gifts by like the sixth of December, which I think is technically Saint Nick's Day. Um, I'm not quite sure. Anyway, but I thought it was really unique because he's like, I have never opened presents on the 24th. He's like, we've had dinner as a family, but never ever opened presents then. I was like, oh, okay. I thought it was interesting. Uh, now John's family they celebrated Saint Nick's Day, and that's when they'd get a present. And then they would have dinner on Christmas Eve and Christmas Day with their families, but there wasn't really presents. Yeah. Um, so, I think that's. I I think it's kind of interesting. I don't know. I loved Christmas when I was growing up because my grandma would make oyster stew on Christmas Eve, and we would all go to mass. Well, we'd all go to grandma's for stew, and then we'd go to mass for candle at service, and we'd come home and we'd all have a sleepover at gr grandma and grandpa's, and we'd get up. And Grandpa would go to church, and we'd go to church, and we'd have Christmas dinner around the table, and my grandma would play the organ, and we'd dance, and it was just great. Eat really good but food. But for the most part, when, when I think of, you know, family traditions around mm -hmm. Christmas, it started with Christmas, and then the family gathering comes, and then the tradition follows. Maybe. Right? Maybe. Well, I mean, there's no way that it doesn't, right? Mm -hmm. That's why. So I do think that's why about families get together at Christmas because it's religious based. Mm -hmm. It's a religious based holiday. Mm -hmm. But now, where are we now? So the, every to family years has ago. different traditions. traditions. Mm -hmm. Like my family, we always go to a Christmas Eve service, always. And this year, because we always have a lot of churches do their children's Christmas Eve programs before Christmas Eve, and my church has always done it on Christmas Eve. And so that's what we do. We go to Christmas Eve service, we watch the little kids program, tell the story of Jesus' birth, and then we go home and we have our own traditions that we do that night. This year it was almost threatened because we only have like two kids in our Sunday school, which Brooks is going to be the star, everyone! <laughs> this is going to be interesting! Um, but it's... It is something that I've done my entire life, and it's something I look forward to. Like, I love going to the little kids program and watching four- and five-year-olds <laughs> sing 
sing little and town to, of Bethlehem or you know no, try ruffle. and like be merry and the ruffle butt tights that you always end up seeing and yeah that's always fun I mean it used to be a really book. elaborate book for next year um a really elaborate program and it's changed over the years but it's something that I just love and look so forward to and I'm I'm sad for the day where we don't have a sun a Christmas Eve service and we have to figure out what we're going to do. With our family it's interesting because we ha used to have really, really strong traditions uh, but when my grandma and grandpa got older and all the kids started moving away and stuff, those things changed and they slowly moved to my parents' house. But one of the traditions that started when I was in college, or when John and I got married I think, um, we, my, we had a name drawing for one of the sides of Christmas and we got my uncle Rodney and my aunt Naomi, and they wanted a pancake griddle. So we wrapped their present, and we're, at, we're like, well, I'm so excited to give you your present. By the way, we'll be at your house tomorrow morning at 7 o'clock for breakfast. And she's like, why? Because? Because? Because. She opens up the griddle, and she realizes what we're talking about. She's like, well, I'll make you breakfast, but it'll be at 9. That tradition, which would have been like the 26th or 27th that year, moved to being Christmas Eve in the morning between our two families. And we always make brunch, and then we do things called reindeer games. And they get sillier and sillier every single year. You never know what they're going to be because my aunt usually figures it out, or me and my aunt work together. But it'll be things like, I don't know, right, decorate a tree blindfolded or with oven mitts or whatever. And just lots of fun games. We've done all kinds of things. But all of us kids now are, pretty much almost all of us are grown up, and we're married, and some of us have children. But it's the one thing that throughout the entire year we sit there, we'll text each other, we'll message each other, going, okay, I cannot wait till Christmas. When we have reindeer games. Who's doing what? You know, who's who's going to lead the meal this year? Who's going to lead the games? And who's Rudolph? Rudolph's not always there. But one year, one person had to dress up as Rudolph. I, I think remember. some people think that Rudolph is always pulling a sleigh. He doesn't. It's he only when it's foggy. When it's foggy, and you uh, listen to the song. Well. Hopefully it's always Th then there's like other traditions with my mom that started when I went to college that on Christmas Eve, her and I watch Bells of St. Mary's and White Christmas while we prep everything for under the tree. But my family's gone away from gifts because I don't think we need anything. It's just spending time together and because we live all over the country, getting to be able to be together for a couple of days. I need a new TV, so. The treat. What? <laughs> <laughs> but see, okay, what you're talking about is just traditions. She went Black Friday mm -hmm. shopping. So those traditions, they could happen any at time, any time right? of the year. And so I'm, I'm not sure that it qualifies is what I'm talking about. It might not. Because the, what, what if what I don't understand what you're talking about? Well, okay. because it's not a universal truth what I'm talking about. It's not common knowledge. Our, our wisdom just walked out the door. Yeah. I'm still here, guys. I wish you'd come be a part of the podcast permanently we miss you a lot he's got things to do Crazy. he can move his laptop in here <laughs> and paint and talk do you know how many times i work while well on the <clears throat> podcast so okay let's get to the deep root of why this bothers me okay christmas does start really early and people do start this the stores are full of christmas stuff in october or, or sooner and it bothers me that it's so, it's so commercial and people want to try to replace being a decent person by just buying something mm -hmm. for someone and then that obligation causes stress and i don't know what the data is but there's more there's more suicides around the holidays yeah there's or pressure. because of the holidays there's a and, lot of pressure. and that pressure gets felt now i don't necessarily feel that pressure because but i used to I used to feel it, but I, you know, you try to sort that stuff out. I, I think a lot of loneliness comes around the holidays too, mm -hmm. especially if you're single, because everybody has their families and they're doing things, they're going Christmas shopping, they're doing this with their family, doing that with your family, and if you don't have a family or you don't have a significant other, and you're just by yourself. You can you maybe get asked to join in with other people, but then you can feel like the third wheel. You can feel like you're the charity case. What say that feelings on you? It is, <laughs> but 
It is a get very it, true reality. If you are a single person around the holidays and you wake up on Christmas morning by yourself because you have no other choice and everyone else is opening presents with their families and you are by, at home watching a movie or mm-hmm. whatever. Like that loneliness is there. And I think part of the Christmas spirit is... Um, is a sense of community and a sense of family and when you don't have one to go home to every night that can get pretty hard on you. I think it also comes to like John and I aren't from here and so things like Thanksgiving Earth? What? <laughs> from from You're this from town. I can't talk about it. I'm in a program. <laughs> anyway uh, but I kind of know what you mean in the fact of when you your work takes you to a place where maybe you don't live by your family uh john and i um have been very very blessed in the communities that we've lived in to build our own communities and we've had people that we've spent christmas with or thanksgiving and easter with and it's interesting now that we live here and every once in a while we have time to go away for a holiday uh we at some point made the decision that the only holiday we go back home for is Christmas and it's with my family um, because we made some agreement before we got married but anyway uh, because we feel a pull towards the family and the community that we built and so we spend Easter with some friends that we've spent Easter with so many times over the years that kind of understood where we were coming from and not being from here or We go back to Michigan to spend that holiday with the people that we used to spend it with because there's a sense of community and family. Um, But I I can understand that. Um, I remember mine and John's first Christmas. Uh, It was it was really different for us in the fact that we didn't buy a Christmas tree. We decorated the ficus because we weren't going to spend a lot of money on a tree. We baked all the Christmas cookies for both sides of our family, but we spent 24 hours, maybe 36 with John's family. We spent 24 hours, maybe 36 with my family, and we spent 72 hours probably on the road driving. Mm-hmm. And at some point, John and I were like, this is, this is not, Christmas cannot be this, or Easter cannot be this, or just, it can't be that. Mm-hmm. So I, I like the traditions we've started, um, but it comes back down to tradition. So, but... On the note of holiday spirit or kindness, one of the things that we've tried to do in our home is during those holiday times that we're home, or even when we go back to my family, is if we know that there's people who aren't spending the holidays with someone, we've invited them to our home, or we've taken them back to Minnesota. Almost every single year we've had somebody that isn't, has spent Christmas with my family, that isn't, you know, hasn't been able to spend it with their family. Um... And we've tried to do that because I think that's important. Um, and it mean like getting involved or having other people involved, mm-hmm. it does lessen loneliness. But that's a hard feeling to try and get rid of. Mm-hmm. Even and and so people, I think that's probably why suicide or not that alone, but it's a big Depression's, factor yeah. in why suicide is higher on the holidays because holidays. I mean, are generally you're spending time with your family. That's what the holidays mean. That's what society has placed it as, too. And if you don't have a family or you don't haven't created your own version of family um, and you are depressed or upset, whatever, it does make it harder. But I have a question. Do you think, because Salvation Army comes out to do, they have their bells around Thanksgiving. and then we Comes right out the before. day after Thanksgiving. <laughs> And um, uh, do you think that should be out year round and not just holidays, or do you think mm. should that just be specifically Christmas? It's too bad that they can't um, <coughs> raise money without the holiday traffic. Do you think that they play on the Christmas Spirit Christmas cheer. Oh yeah, a lot of charities do to get more the, money. That, at they that take time. advantage of the fact that people are more giving during Christmas. And we should all be more giving year round. And we should all be more giving year round. I this I hate to say this though, 
people also in December have gotten that note from their accountant that says, listen, you can give X amount of dollars. So I think some organizations may take advantage of tax. I don't know that that's going to be such a thing anymore, though, with the new taxation changes. But it has been up to. Up until now. But yeah, for after years. this year, it's not. I mean, after this year, <laughs> nonprofits like ours and the Edgerton, and I mean, we're going to have to really, really, really capitalize on merit because taxes aren't going to help us at all. Separate podcast. Separate co- podcast, but hashtag taxes. Probably that should be my personal podcast. <laughs> we shouldn't do that one. No, we year. maybe shouldn't. <laughs> you know, if we look at kindness, though, in spirit, um, I think it's kind of exciting the direction that we as a business, um, both in education and just as a business as a whole and how we interact with our team, have tried to really encourage kindness and that spirit of kindness all the time. Um, I think that's, maybe that's our way of combating seasonal kindness. Not combating, but encouraging the season to be longer. I don't know. (laughs) I I can't I can't I can't say that I d- agree or disagree with that because okay so are we trying to be leaders or managers that I always go back to that in my little notebook here mm-hmm. are we leading or are we managing so shouldn't you just be nice to people just because you should be nice to people yeah whether it's advantageous within your company or absolutely or, absolutely you know okay. absolutely but we've made that a priority in saying that look humankind isn't always kind but here we are going to be so that'd be leading that'd be what that would be leading that would be leading Mm -hmm. so then the question is leaders or servants servant leadership it's probably another podcast probably <clears throat> maybe we get to the point where we start just saying holiday cheer Christmas spirit it's a thing mm-hmm. but it's overdone it's overemphasized St- and people really need to remind themselves what is actually important and I think a lot of people do this after the holidays. They sit back and they say, okay, what was actually important? Was it the cool toy that the kids got that now they're playing with the box? And, or you look back and say, or did the kids around Christmas time have more fun just playing with their cousins that they don't see maybe twice a year? Well, you can also, I mean, parlay that into resolutions. And the resolutions that people make every year and the ones that the, they actually stick to. Because those are the ones that actually mean something and are important to them. Do you do New Year's resolutions? Not really. I don't. Yes, you do. I just said not really. I do April 17th resolutions. No, I'm, I don't. But I mean, it's arbitrary. I do January or June 4th resolutions. I do, actually. Okay. We do. Uh, that's my an anniversary. Like, and we always go over and we reevaluate what we love. You know, we talk about our year. What we loved and what we hope the next year is going to be. I like say what I hope to happen, and but I don't like. I used to like be like I'm going to start working out and I'm going to lose weight. I mean, it was one of those people, but now that's just become part of my life. It's a lifestyle change that I decided to make and needed to make. So that isn't a resolution because I'm going to stick to that for the rest of my life. Otherwise, like. I make a I make a vision board. I started that last year, and I will make another vision board because nothing came true. <laughs> well, I don't know that. I don't know what's on your board. Uh, I yeah. My mom said I was too goal oriented to ever make resolutions because I make goals, and then when I accomplish that goal, I make a new goal. And I'm not going to wait till January first to do that. So I did it. I enjoyed the vision board process though. Mm-hmm. So that's something I'm going to stick to yearly. I don't remember when I made mine. It was not January, though. I think it was, like, March or April. But 
I had that out for the majority of my year. So if you came to my house, you saw it because I had it out. It's on a chair in it the was, corner of a dining room. It was. You saw it right when you walked to the door. It's now in my closet. You couldn't not see it actually when it was out, which is good because that's the point. It's a giant foam core. <laughs> board. We do vision boards in our. January runs an arbitrary arbitrary day. Mm -hmm. It's it's very it's arbitrary because it's just it's but just you, another day. It is. Just like Christmas, or not Christmas, but December twenty fifth is just another day. Because if so we took back the history, Jesus wasn't born then. Well, and that's why I said corrected myself and said not Christmas, but. December twenty fifth. Wasn't. Just a day on a calendar, arbitrary day. And so when I think back to, because I go through the same thing, you go through, wake up in the morning on December 25th, okay, it's just me, yeah. and I may or may not see my kids on that day, mm -hmm. but I don't see my kids every day anyway. So it's just, to me, it's kind of arbitrary. I have to treat it as such. Otherwise, it's very sad. It is, because you think of, like, like, I think of my brother and my sister-in-law who are with my nephews, and they're opening presents, and they're eating breakfast, and they're sitting and playing toys, and granted, I know that it's complete chaos because I get the Snapchat videos, and my brother's super annoyed because Brooks wants to open a thousand-piece Legos or whatever. Duh, well, why'd you get them? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, but it's, like, the thought of waking up to that kids being happy or you know like to that camaraderie and that joy and you're you're hanging out you're with your coffee watching christmas movie or the yule log that's what i watched last year so i've never had that on christmas because christmas i either stayed at my brother and sister-in-law's or i was at home i do understand that for thanksgiving and easter um and for my family's when growing up, Thanksgiving and Easter were very, very big family-oriented holidays. Um, and so I understood that because I, in college, I worked and I was happy to work. And I'm now creating my own traditions by myself. And that, I think, is important. Um, so I have my, my, I have my Halloween tradition that I do by myself. Once my trick-or-treaters are gone, I watch Hocus yeah. Pocus with and a glass of wine. Just one glass. Just one. Well, it may be not wine. Unless it's a Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> if it's Sunday it, fun day, then. But it could be I mean, a drink. I, an adult beverage of choice. And then I usually have a cup of coffee and I watch a Christmas movie the day of Christmas. Or I work out. Like this year I'll probably work out because it's a Tuesday, right? Mm -hmm. So I'll probably work out in the morning. It's so. Because it's a Tuesday. <laughs> it's it's it is Tuesday. a Tuesday, and my workout schedule is I work out on Tuesdays. So, saying, but if you look at traditions, you know, my family, one of the things that we do is we go to Michaela's house for trick or treating. And I, we don't actually trick or treat. We go to Michaela's house. You go to April's house, and we go you to Cal's house. You went to my neighborhood this, this year. This year we went to Michaela's neighborhood because April wasn't going to be there and Cal wasn't home. We used to go to the Diaz's, but the Diaz's have a little boy, and they go out. So a lot of times we just, we'll see them around, but we that our tradition is we go to Michaela's house. <laughs> we usually go to April's house and Cal's house, and we get tacos. We don't trick-or-treat. We don't do the streets. Um, I usually order pizza for Halloween, but I didn't. This but I love going to Michaela's house because it's really fun to, to see her, and I, Cal and Sarah love seeing them. I think they give my son too much candy. April... Uh, love seeing her and her husband. When we go to the Diaz's, that was always fun because Sarah really gets into Halloween and it's a great time. Um, Thanksgiving, we've started our own tradition. We go we go run a half marathon and then we do Village Inn. And then we have Thanksgiving at night with our family. But it's our family and we do things like we make hand turkeys every year. And this year we weren't home for Thanksgiving because we decided to spend it with Rita. So the next day we made Thanksgiving dinner and we made hand turkeys and it was great. Um, so some of that stuff I get, and I do get what you're saying, though, is if you have to think about it as a Tuesday, so that it's... But it is. Yeah, it is. Do you have any input? It's not hard for me, though, to think of it just as a Tuesday. Mm -hmm. So. Maybe it used to not be. I think my first Christmas now. on my own, like, my first Christmas on my own was hard. After I moved out of my parents' house and I was... I'm, 
they were together, Brennan and together, and I was by myself. Like, I just had Frankie. He's... Frankie's a cat. Yeah, <laughs> Frankie's my cat. Frankie's awesome. No, he's not. <laughs> yes, Another he... podcast. <laughs> Another do you episode. have any traditions that you guys do yeah, for do Christmas do? or Thanksgiving? For Christmas traditions? Or Thanksgiving, yeah. We what do we do? Sarah makes really good Christmas cookies. They make hundreds and hundreds of cookies. They're we awesome. Deliver to uh, people around the neighborhood and our old neighborhood here in Aurora and then on Christmas Eve we all get gathered together in our house and we have an exchange $35 gift and then on Christmas morning open big packages with snowboards that was this year Santa Santa Santa. 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 brought a really cool snowboard for you and then we will, Sarah will make a little breakfast and then we eat cookies and we normally get a, uh, I don't know what kind of Italian bread that they always send. So we'll eat Italian bread and coffee or tea or eggnog. <laughs> you have Spice a lot of options <laughs> in your tradition. No, it's a little eating. So, you know, our house, we don't do Christmas until New Year's Eve. Yeah, <coughs> you're not here. Mm-hmm. So, I actually, we don't have the tradition of Santa in our house. Not because I'm anti Santa. We celebrate on Christmas Eve. Well, you're going to stay on the naughty list with that attitude. I'll tell you, Santa has been really nice the last few years, and he's dropped a present from his grandparents in Wisconsin off at the grandparents in Minnesota's house. Well, they'll do that. Chaz, I mean, and he leaves a note. Just like you Really yes. nice. Yeah. Yeah, it's really nice. It's very, very handy. Um, the great thing about not doing Christmas at our house, though, like that, and knowing that my parents don't do a lot of gifts or anything, is that Chaz gets to grow up with experiences and memories versus us hauling home boxes and boxes of toys. That he doesn't need. And I appreciate that. A lot. Because I didn't grow up with that kind of stuff, so I like that it's mostly memories and it's experiences and it's time with people. I love getting to watch my nephews open presents now. Because Brooks now gets into it. Reed is kind of at the careless stage, but Brooks, like, he's really into opening presents and helping, and it's fun to watch him get excited about stuff. One year we were watching kids open presents. And they were opening, and they weren't even paying attention to what they were getting. They just wanted to open up the. It was like a dopamine dopamine rush. Yeah, open up another thing, open another thing, another thing. Move on. And I just remember saying to my mom, "Next year, and from then on out, we are not doing presents. We don't get to see each other enough. We're not doing presents. We don't really do presents. And we stopped. Grandma's. And I love it. And I, I absolutely love it." I get, like, two things. My grandma will, like, compile something from around her house or the thrift shop or whatever into a bag or the dollar store. And then um, that's the only present I usually get at my grandma's Christmas. Like, we don't really do presents there. We never really, I mean, we used to kind of, but not really. We just go and we gather and we eat. We usually, have, we've had soup the last few years. We've done chicken noodle and taco soup usually and we just hang out mm-hmm. as a family one year my aunt bethany wrapped up her damn cat <laughs> <laughs> like in christmas vacation i still think dario needs to be cousin eddie oh he does <laughs> i try but one year my mom wrapped up a piece for a tractor for my stepdad and it didn't work because she had bought something else and he had to go find it and my brother got a new mattress, so she wrapped up like a crib mattress, and then he had to go find it. And so that year we went looking for things. It so was kind of fun. One year we <laughs> came home. I remember we came home from the orthodontist, and the UPS guy had dropped off a present in 
a package, which was one of my presents, in the garage. And so we're pulling into the garage, and there was this, I got a keyboard. And um, pull in, and I see this giant keyboard box leaning up against the wall of the garage. And I was like, oh. And I was all excited. And my mom's like, that's not for you. She's pretending, right? She's pretending. And when it comes to Christmas, and we're opening up presents, and she brings up the presents that she's hid and whatever. And I'm opening up presents, and I know the keyboard's not here. And I get done opening presents, and we all get done opening presents. And I'm like, I'm missing something. And my mom's like, no, you're not. No, you're not. And I was like, no, I'm missing something. And then all of a sudden, she disappears and comes back out with this keyboard. She's like, so mad at the UPS driver. This was supposed to be a surprise. <laughs> That I love. Had that I more. ever said I'm missing something, my mom would have probably returned all my presents because she would have thought I went through the closets. <laughs> I was like, I loved did that you? keyboard so much. I did one year. You got caught. Yes, <laughs> but I didn't get caught in the motion. Like my mom just knew that some. She, she can tell when you're open. Stuff. She so oh, we used to live fine. in this house in Pennock, Minnesota, and my mom hid. For what it was, but she hid something in a closet in the bathroom that was also the laundry room. We had this big whatever. And, and I remember, I don't even think I was looking for that. I was looking for something else, and I found it. I was <gasps> like, it was so great. But I didn't put it back exactly right and cover it up exactly. So she did. She took it back. <laughs> I you didn't get it. <laughs> so this is, this is me. This is like quintessentially me. I did it once. My brother had bought me a present from American Eagle, and it was in a clothing box, and I knew... And so I was like shaking the package and I was just, I was too damn curious. And I popped open the box and I looked in and saw what it was. I went immediately to tell my mom that I opened the present because I felt so guilty. <laughs> told on yourself? I told on myself because I felt so guilty that I had opened a present before Christmas. That's the only time I've ever snuck a package. Ever. I've never, like, and I felt guiltier than freaking... I told my brother then. I was like, I'm so sorry I opened the package before. <laughs> I think last year was the first year that I hadn't guessed what John bought me, like, unintentionally. The I first was get a text message from John Bader. What does Miley want <laughs> for Christmas? No, so what our what very palette does she want from Tarte? Like, <laughs> I don't want one this year. Uh, no, our very first Christmas together, he's like, all of a sudden it just came to me. He's like, oh, I know what I'm getting you for Christmas. And we're driving down the road, going to speak at an event. I'm like, okay, whatever. And they're also like, driving. I'm like, you're totally getting me a giant post-it note, aren't you? And he's like, I, I, I didn't even say anything. One of my favorite gifts ever, giant post-it note pads. Perfect. They are handy. Awesome. They're awesome. Best Christmas present ever. Loved it. I'm going to ask my mother where she hid things. Because I looked. I don't think I ever found anything <laughs> when I was a kid. Well, there's a lot of hiding spots in our house. Yeah, so. there yeah but as a kid, spots. you know most of the places. I never I would, I honest to goodness, never looked for Christmas presents. Ever. Where do you think they were? You did. No, I really never oh, did. My mom where, would hide them back, where do in you think the. They were? But my mom would bring them out from downstairs, so I know at some point Sorry. they oh, no. <laughs> they were down in her framing room. But also, like you live on a farm, though. I There's live on so a farm. Many places you but the thing things. is, is like Santa always came to our house Christmas Eve, and so when we went to church, my mom would always be. L Last one out the house. Yes, and I didn't pick up on it until like the very end of, end of it. Why mom would be the last one out of the house? Really? You're like fourteen before you catch on. <laughs> no, like ten. <laughs> I was ten. She hasn't caught on. And yet. I didn't even She's then just realizing catch on to it, it right now. It, no, I literally. It was just like a few years ago. It dawned on me like mom was getting the presents out, and I didn't even realize it. I'd come home and Santa had been there and the milk was gone and there was a bite in the cookie. Like, whatever. I was so Your mom naive. came out of the car wiping <laughs> cookie crumbs from her mouth. No, she <laughs> you never didn't did. Get it. She never did. But I, and my brother was just like... Mom, why do you have a Brett's, milk mustache? I mean, Brett's eight years older than me. She would dump it down the Santa street. brought my brother a dog one year, my brother Jacob. 
a dog in a 60 pound bag of horse food because he was testing the waters. He said to my mom, he's like, well, if Santa's real, he'll bring me a 60 pound bag of horse food. I was like, it doesn't come in a 60 pound bag. Like that's, that's not a thing. So we left church early and went and picked this dog up middle estate and hid it in the dog crate with my great Dane. And my mom, lucky her works for an elevator and they made and she made sure it weighed 60 pounds. Custom bag. A yeah. custom bag. Like a elevator like a, in a building or like a... <laughs> yeah. yeah, she just went and pushed 6'4". Okay. <laughs> ding, ding, ding. <laughs> there's such a thing. Uh, there's I know, genius. There's, there's um, more men for elevators, yes. You know, when I was, Sorry, when I was, I think, five, we lived in an apartment in Candy, Ohio, Minnesota, and... Um, it was just a two-bedroom apartment, and uh, we didn't have a tree or anything, and we were at my grandparents'. And my dad had come home for this Christmas, and we had gotten sleeping bags, and all the kids, each set of the, each family got a folding table, a little kid's folding table with chairs. Anyway, when we went back to our house, somebody had come in our house and put up a Christmas tree and had decorated it. And there was a gift for my mom and for my brother and for me underneath there. And I, to this day, have no idea who ever did that. But I just, that was probably, that's the Christmas spirit in a lot of ways, I think. Like, I, I to this day, have no idea who did it. And it wasn't my mom. So I remember my mom being a little bit heartbroken that we might not have a tree. And um, my mom loved, she loved decorating trees. So anyway, uh, yeah, I remember that. I just thought of that. It's kind of a sweet thing. If I go home Saturday and somebody put a tree up in my house. And smiling. No, I'm I'm hunting for who did that. <laughs> They're not allowed in. My tree's up and ready. Um I put a it tree. It randomly flashes. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see. I would have to break in through the dryer vent for yeah. someone to find your house. <laughs> yeah, that's a good. So point a corner too. lot. <laughs> corner lot. I almost got the keys to what the shed. What about eight corners ones? in Plymouth though? <laughs> There you go, mirror down. It's got a front porch because he sits on it and he takes pictures. He does. Um, I almost. <laughs> There's I, no grass. In I the wanted backyard. to mow his lawn. I wanted to mow his lawn, so yes. I told him that I was gonna take up meditating and yoga in his garden shed. And he was really legitimately gonna give me a key. And then he was like, "Before I give you a key, you better tell me what exactly you're actually doing." And then he's like, "I will mow my lawn," and I was like, "But I wanted to do that for you." Because you hate mowing lawn, and you work really hard, and I just thought that would be one thing we could take off your list. He didn't let me do that. Mm -hmm. So I'm fairly so certain I'm not breaking into his house to put up a Christmas tree. No, but tree. I bet you we could find it. Oh, I bet you you and I could absolutely well, find you, it. Well, you know what my pickup looks like. Right? I haven't seen it in a long time, yeah, but, but I think but I could figure it out. Yeah. It's a I know what your neighbor's house looks like, because one time you sent a snapshot, and across the street, or was it next <laughs> Also, I hate to say that you could check my personnel file. For my <laughs> and that's do that. I hate finding keys to do that, so I won't be doing that. <laughs> that's not as fun as sleuthing it out. Well, there's only 400 people in the town, so I'm pretty. Oh, you know what? His past student. No, I can figure Is a postmaster in the post office at Plymouth, so we could ask her. Actually, she got transferred to Beatrice. Oh, I can well, I it have out, Kate. I have sleuthing. Skills. I have Kate's phone number, mm -hmm. and Kate's brother. Well, now I have Kate's brother's phone number. He, he knows where mm -hmm. Wiss lives. He, you would be surprised though. He would not be so quick to tell <coughs> you. He would, he would be concerned for my safety. He's no, not just gonna really because he was willing to go mow your lawn for me. Yeah, but did he tell you where I lived? That's two different things. He already yeah. knew. See, he asked me if I was gonna meet him there, <laughs> or if I was gonna mail him the key. This is ridiculous. Off the rail. <laughs> Off the rails, tangent of a tangent. Okay, so I'm excited that the leadership center is looking a little bit like Christmas. <laughs> we found baby Jesus this morning. <laughs> <laughs> we did. We did. Somebody found Jesus this morning. <laughs> and Mary. <laughs> there's no, there's no Joseph. No, Joseph no left Joseph. the party. No, he left the party a couple of years ago. Really think about it in the story, the Christmas story. Joseph wasn't that needed. What did he do? Lead a donkey? Well, he yeah. took Let's it talk about that a little. I mean, that's well, his can role, we, right? Can, can we do a little uh, little pause here? 
Okay. Uh, so some of some of my friends are texting me, and I said I'm gonna when I'm meeting. <laughs> Are you videotaping yeah. me right now? Yeah. Oh, he's I mean, videotaping this. Oh, my gosh. Meeting. So, one of my friends said, oh, I have to do this again. Yeah. Okay, one of your friends said. We're trying to go live during the podcast. Yeah, we're trying At least to we're not Dario's on the phone. phone. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if this goes better. Dario's got anyway, so I'm talking with my friends, and they were texting me a text back, and I sent a, a little video of what we were doing. Because I said, I'm on a meeting. And they're like, what meeting? So I said, I'm on a meeting. And a friend of mine uh, was interested in my game. <laughs> you know, who wouldn't be? Yeah, I mean, who so, wouldn't be? His name is Oscar. Well, that's a great name. <laughs> so can you say something to Oscar? Hey, hey Oscar. Hi, Oscar. <laughs> can you say police, Navidad? <laughs> no. <laughs> Merry Christmas. <laughs> Hey, Oscar, I'm going to put her phone number down on a piece of paper and just hold it here for you. Oh, I can give. Yeah. <laughs> I did mean, Dario's phone. Yeah, Dario's, Dario's got her number. So. so, yeah. Anyway, thank you, guys. That's why it's just angled right here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. I love the fact that on almost every episode of this podcast, we have managed to talk about Michaela's face. He was like, <laughs> That's he's trying to make sure you don't have a lonely Christmas. I feel I'm red. <laughs> you realize I'm red. You yeah, you are. <laughs> you are. <laughs> anyway, we found Jesus, baby Jesus. Yeah, found, found baby Jesus today. Yes. Yeah, so you wanted to talk about that? Do we want to read a passage so we know that we're not going to set off comments? Holy. <laughs> <laughs> You were open. You didn't like just Did you expect him not to be no. open? I, no, 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 no. You were totally no. I that. appreciate that you mm-hmm. didn't just turn around and face the corner of me. <laughs> or face, you know, share the universal symbol for hello. But you had no choice. I you would. had to say hello, Oscar. <laughs> so. You had to say hello, Oscar. You were put on the spot and you really had no choice. You had to do it. I didn't what, have a problem doing it. I'm just really red right now. <laughs> he was so red. I have a parallel. Um, <laughs> really dudes, hot. Due to ask their like... um, girlfriends to marry him in public, in a public place. I Hate think it. I think it's a terrible thing because you just put that woman in a place where she can't say no. I would have said no. That's a terrible thing. That's why I don't like that. But anyway. I don't like that. But, okay, so... I don't want the Although attention. when Michaela gets proposed to, <laughs> I don't want the Oscar. Attention. I hope you're listening. It's not about being public, but we have to make sure we have a photographer because Michaela has asked for it, and we have to make sure her nails are done. Oh, that's a personal request from her then. Yes. Okay, so that's. I, so I make sure we're no, in the but like. <laughs> but honestly, I don't want it to be a public no, proposal you because would. this, this right here. <laughs> She's pointing at her beautiful face, by the way. That is know. like cherry red. What if it's Fenway? Oh, yeah. What if it's Fenway on home base? Did you say yeah, but you can arrange that to be by okay. yourself. <laughs> or I'm not saying big screen. I'm just, maybe even it's just like a... Low key, yeah. let me drop to my knee. That would be, yeah. like, I just don't want a grand gesture. Like a super grand gesture. Yeah. In front of people, you would like the grand gesture. Yeah. <laughs> but not a production. I just don't... <laughs> <laughs> he was just a tiny little... <laughs> I don't like being the center of attention. You sit in the corner. (laughs) You're fine. It's all arbitrary. Do you need a fan? I don't know, but my face just keeps getting warm and warm and warm. All right, so bottom line, I want to wrap this up. All right, I have Christmas cheer. I really do. I mean, and I'm not, I mean, I'm kind of a jerk. And I'm very, I'm very like... Your happy face and mad face look the same. They look the same, and so I try. I don't get too high. I don't get too low. Try to, but I do have. I do have holiday cheer and Christmas spirit and stuff like that. Um, but I, I, I ask that question every year, probably for the past ten years. I ask that of people, are you just nice during the holidays, or wouldn't it be great if everybody had this spirit year round? You know, because people are nicer. I think people are nicer. And yeah, Christmas is commercial and we exploit the season and stuff like that. But 
I think people genuinely are a little bit nicer. I think people make an effort. And I say, wouldn't it be great if we did that year round? But if that's the case, that people are nicer now, that's okay too. Yeah, it's okay. It is. It is. Dario officially joined back on the podcast, everyone. So great. We have a special guest today, everybody, Dario Diaz. He's not a special guest. He was an originator <laughs> and actually, he's like, here. he's the deal I, of the week. Found, found Have you done the deal of the week this no, week? No, you haven't I'm filmed not. one? Okay. It's been a f- well, we're going to wrap oh, this up. Okay. This has been the Hospitality Authority podcast here on the beautiful campus of the Leadership Center of Nebraska. Thank you for listening, all 12 of you. Uh, go tell a friend. Uh, more to come. Thank you. Bye.